For nearly a week now, we've waited for answers in a bizarre case on 264 that left a man and a woman dead. The man was shot. The woman's cause of death still unknown tonight. Even more troubling, we've learned a fire was set at the home the two shared the morning they died. While a criminal investigation is underway by state police, family could not stay quiet. 13 News Now reporter Chenu Hur sat down with a family member tonight. Yeah, I sat down with a relative tonight, and she was, of course, very distraught and, and devastated over what happened. Tonight, the niece of the man who was found dead in the car spoke with us. She confirms to us the man is 57-year-old William Davis, and the 50-year-old woman is his wife, Belinda Davis. However, law enforcement has not confirmed that. Davis's niece spoke with us telling us who he was. Last Wednesday, Alice Connor says their family was changed forever. It's like terrible and devastating. She says her uncle William Davis, whom they call Willie, was shot to death in a case of murder-suicide involving his wife. State police found both inside a car that crashed on I-264. Although Connor told us who they were, troopers haven't released their names. State police only said there was a gun in the car and that a man and woman who were inside appeared to die before the crash. Connor says prior to the wreck that day, there was a fire at the Davis's house on Paiute Road in Virginia Beach. We couldn't find the couple. We didn't know where they were. And then we discovered later that they were both uh, died in, in the car on the interstate. So it connected the two after that. Connor and other relatives say Davis and his wife were married for about 20 years. Uncle Willie, as Connor calls him, was unlike any other. He was very sweet and very funny, and he always had a smile, so it was very genuine. He loved softball. Um, he loved to be playful. He loved his dogs very much, Caesar and Jerry Lee. Which is why. We've been really, really struggling to make sure that he is taken care of with dignity since he didn't get to die that way. Connor says it hurts that someone like Davis had to go through something tragic alone. There's clearly, you know, something that was going on dynamically between them and, and you know, my uncle suffered in a, a terrible way, uh, needlessly. Now, the medical examiner did tell us that Davis died from a gunshot wound to the head. As far as Belinda Davis goes, there still hasn't been a cause determined. The Virginia Beach Fire Department and Virginia State Police are still investigating both incidents. No other details have been released at this time. Chinu Hurt, 13 News Now. Tonight, a 20-year-old is behind bars accused of gunning down a 15-year-old boy in Norfolk. This is the shooting we brought you as breaking news. Now, Daquan Alexander is charged with second-degree murder and use of a firearm. The violence broke out around 8 p.m. on Herbert Collins Way yesterday. We did some digging into fatal teen shootings in Norfolk and found some disturbing numbers. 2014 and 2017 saw the highest amount of murders with four young lives lost each of those two years. The numbers dipped between those years, but in 2018, it isn't, it isn't over and three teens have already died from gun violence. That means no graduation, that means no marriage, that means no starting a family. You know, all of that is, is gone. The motive is still unknown. There's a be on the lookout notice for a Norfolk woman who vanished while driving to Alabama. According to news reports there, 68-year-old Sherry Sanders was on her way to Monroeville to visit her sister, but she never arrived. Video recorded August 5th shows her putting gas into a red Corolla in the town of Evergreen, Alabama. Police are still working to find out what happened to her. Dog left in a hot car at Bush Gardens. Police tell us someone flagged down an officer after the pit bull was found inside with the windows up. The officer was able to get the vehicle open using a door opening tool. That's when the owner arrived and we're told confronted the officer, eventually hitting him. The struggle continued as the officer was taking him into custody. Both suffered minor injuries. The 17 year old faces a long list of charges. Animal control has the dog. Just in a vote for the future of Newport News, neighbors taking on city council over city farm, the waterfront property was the site of a jail until it closed in 2015. One group is pushing city leaders to turn it into a park. Some city leaders have a different idea. 13 News Now reporter Robert Boyd is live outside City Hall. 
Well, Regina, residents were loud and clear tonight. No one is taking away their parkland. Now, of course, we're referring to City Farm. These residents desperately wanted to remain zoned as parks and recreation. And in the end, City Council agreed by a vote of five to two. What does democracy look like? This, this is, is what democracy, democracy looks like. like. The movement began outside Newport News City Hall Tuesday night. Residents say they've been waiting decades for City Farm, once part of the old prison, to become a public park, and they don't want it taken away from them. I'm hoping for my grandchildren now to have be able to walk, jog, um, bicycle along the James River. Residents became concerned when the city manager proposed to change the zoning designation of the 60 acre property from parks and recreation to understudy. They believe by putting the city farm under study, it would open up the gates for residential and commercial developments. Has anybody ran across a group of people that's for turning it into expensive housing? I can't find them. I haven't found one person. Residents said city farm is some of the last open land along the James River and it should remain open to the public. The city farm is like the last bit of property of its kind. Uh, we have a real resource here and that we want to use it, you know, in the long term. I really don't believe uh, that selling this off is the right move. More than 6,000 people signed a petition asking the city to keep city farm zoning as parks and recreation. Listen to your people. Your people have spoken. We have voted you to where you are today right now. Listen to your planning commission. Why have a planning commission if you didn't want to listen to it to begin with? However, currently City Farm remains closed to the public. The mayor, who is in favor of the zoning change, says even if the city were to open it up as a public park, studies would still need to be done. We've got to decide if it's going to be a park, what kind of park, the impact on the community, the traffic patterns, the environmental study. All of this has to be studied, even if it's going to be a park. Now, the mayor also accused some of the public of being a little confused tonight, at least regarding what park that they were talking about. He felt that some of the public thought that they were talking about Riverview Farm Park, which they you know, was in jeopardy of being developed. But the city assured everyone that Riverview Farm Park was never on the docket here tonight. That was never the case. That park will remain untouched. Live in Newport News, Robert Boyd, 13 News Now. New tonight, a toddler has died after falling from a 24th floor balcony at a Northern Virginia apartment complex. It is the same complex where a three-year-old fell from an open window and died just months ago. Fairfax County police say an adult caregiver was helping another child in the unit Monday when the two-year-old fell to his death from the balcony at the Skyline Towers Apartments in Falls Church. I can't imagine falling, let alone falling from that kind of a distance. And to be a little child, what goes through your mind when you're falling and no one can help you. The parents of the first child who fell have filed suit against the owners and managers of buildings, accusing them of negligence and wrongful death. Tonight, we've learned at least 1,000 children, possibly more, were molested by hundreds of Roman Catholic priests in the Pennsylvania diocese. That's according to a grand jury report released today. It also says church officials took steps to cover up the abuse. Donya Bacchus reports. Pennsylvania officials releasing a landmark grand jury report identifying more than a thousand victims and 300 predator priests who the report says molested children in six dioceses. The time of telling these victims to keep their truth to themselves has ended. The report also accusing dozens of church leaders of taking steps to cover up the abuse over a period of decades beginning in the mid 1950s. Priests were raping little boys and girls and the men of God who were responsible for them not only did nothing, they hid it all. Pennsylvania's attorney general releasing the report during an emotional news conference surrounded by tearful victims, some sharing their stories in a video. I was groomed starting young. They targeted me because I was fatherless. In response to the report, Bishop David Zubik of the Pittsburgh Diocese apologizing to the victims. That diocese is one of the six named in the report. I promise to meet with any victim to apologize to them in person and in the name of the church. Saying the church continues to take significant steps to stop the pattern of abuse. We learn from the past and that's why we can never reach a point to say that we are doing enough.
There have only been charges filed against two clergymen. The other priests identified as abusers are either dead or will avoid arrest because the crimes are too old to prosecute. Donya Backus, ABC News, Los Angeles.